What's up you guys? Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to this. It has been a while since you and I have photo adventured together and I am super happy to be back. I hope you are too. Um, Katya and I are in Europe for the fall. We just got here about a week ago and we would have been shooting already, but I had a massive amount of client work that still needed to be done before I could really get into this. So I've spent the last week, week or seven or eight days working 12 to 14 hours a day on Katya's mom's kitchen table just trying to get us to a point where we can cut away and, and just be photographers for a couple of months. So that's where we are. So today, this afternoon, we are out photo scouting a couple of spots near her hometown that, we, uh, that we've been talking about shooting for a while. And uh, if you know me, you know that I like to be over prepared and I like to be on location. I like to know what my angle is. I like to kind of know the situation because so many of these shots are sunrise shots, especially landscapes. And uh, I feel like if I'm coming up here in the dark and I don't know the place and it's the first time I've been here, it's really difficult in the moment. There's so many other factors. Am I standing in the right spot? Do I have the right angle? Am I gonna shoot it vertical, horizontal? Is it a panorama? Am I prepared? Do I have the right lens on? And as the light starts to change in the morning, it can happen so quickly and that magic moment can only be a moment sometimes. So being prepared is something that I, I sort of push as often as I can. So that's what we're doing today. We actually walked to the little church, stood there, and wanted to put the drone up in the air, but it's super windy. So we ended up just driving through these sort of uh, forest roads and coming out on the other side of this little valley and, uh, and found a beautiful shot from this side. And so I think that's what we're gonna shoot in the morning. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the rundown of what we're gonna do. Let's, uh, well, welcome back to the show, Willa. Uh, we'll see you in the morning. <laughs> We're back. It's the next morning. Um, we got crazy lost coming up here. Well, we didn't get lost. Google got lost. Um, I dropped a pin here yesterday and it took us a whole different way. Put us on this farm road that just got smaller and smaller and smaller until it was just like two tracks running down a little bit of grass that ran into some trees. Um, we had to double back, just like race car driving through the forest, like trying to get back here. Came around a different way. Google finally recalibrated and, and we got here. Um, the sky was starting to light up pink and looking really pretty and then it just sort of muted out so we're kind of just waiting. There's some clouds hiding the mountains behind the church so I don't know what we're going to get if we're going to get anything but we're just going to watch the light and, uh, and hopefully something will something will happen in the sky here. There are a couple of other photographers that just showed up and I thought they were going to come over here and I thought oh no I'm not going to get so weird about talking on camera when other people are around but they walked down the road a bit so I think we're all right. Now watching the light develop here, I kind of think that the magic of this shot is going to happen in post. Like these beautiful green sort of roll off hills around the church are getting just enough light to be interesting and to be highlighted and there's just enough shadow on the opposite side that there's going to be something to work with. Um, but the sun's still behind some clouds and so we're not getting that direct light on the church that would give us a really strong highlight. Uh, we're gonna keep watching it because the sun's still really not I Wouldn't say up because it's still behind clouds So we still have some time which is awesome and everything is kind of getting brighter So we're gonna have more detail. We're gonna have a better exposure. There's gonna be less noise, which is always awesome So in the course of just a few seconds here The Sun just peeked through the clouds and we're getting this beautiful highlight on the side of the church but then also there are these rolling mountains behind with trees and and you're just getting these highlights and shadows and highlights and shadows and it's just super cool so i'm just trying to get as many frames while this is lit this way but also it's not it's not direct it's not direct light there's still some clouds in the middle so it's warm and it's beautiful, but it's still soft. We're getting a little bit of that soft box effect still, which is gonna be amazing because uh, then nothing's gonna be blown out. Everything will have really good detail. And, uh, and we should be able to really make a nice shot out of it. I'm back to shooting panorama because I actually think that's how this is gonna go. And I'm trying to be quiet because there's other people around. 
Okay, I wanna stop the video here for just a second because I'm noticing something as I'm watching this back, as I'm editing, and I think it's something we should talk about. Um, not only because I felt it in the moment, but because I think as photographers, it's something that doesn't really get talked about that much, and, uh, and that is lens shaming, or rather feeling less than because of whatever you're shooting at the time. Um, in this shoot, you, the guys you can see behind me, there's a couple of guys who rocked up with giant 600 millimeter, you know, telescopes on a camera, which is great. And look, if you're, if that's your thing, perfect. But my thing is travel and travel photography and between video and drone and my regular camera kit, there's just not room in my bag for a telescope. But when I'm shooting, now normally on a landscape shoot, I'm shooting this beautiful 16 to 35. It's a very nice lens, it's a professional lens, it looks great on the camera. Um, no shame in this lens at all. Uh, but in this shoot, I needed something a little bit longer than 35 millimeters, so I pulled out my trusty 28 to 300. That's right, super zoom. This thing looks super dorky. You stick this on a camera and you zoom it, eh and you look like a dork. Now, is it a great lens? Yes. Is it a clear lens? Yes. Do I get great photographs with this lens? Yes. But it doesn't stop me from feeling a little weird when guys roll up with giant lenses. Now, not that I don't have giant lenses at home, but when I'm traveling, I'm traveling with a drone, I'm traveling with video equipment, I'm traveling with my full photo kit, and having a giant lens in that bag just isn't feasible. Not to mention, if I'm walking around a town, I don't really wanna have a telescope that I'm pointing at people. I don't really wanna have to deal with that. And look, if that's your thing, awesome. <laughs> Good job on that sweet ass lens. But if you're traveling, a lens like this is invaluable. And the shots that I've gotten with this that I wouldn't have been able to get otherwise, I can't tell you how many of those there are, but it's a lot. So let's all just agree that no matter what you're shooting, it's really not about the gear. It's about the guy behind the gear or the girl. And, uh, and you can make beautiful photos with just about anything these days. I mean, let's be honest. Cameras are so good. The stuff we were shooting years ago, the six megapixel muddy disaster files that we were getting were so bad compared to today's iPhone that being ashamed of having a great lens just because it doesn't look like a telescope is, is silly. And I know that, and I know you know that, but uh, I think maybe we could all just sort of give ourselves a little bit of slack here and, uh, and just take pictures. Right now, the real shame here is that we've got a ton of light coming from one side of the frame, but the other side of the frame is just sort of blue sky and kind of flat. And uh, so hopefully, if I'm shooting a bracket right now, Hopefully in post we can sort of bring down the the tones over there and at least make make some contrasting interest. Now I'm only shooting one frame. I've opened up and I'm shooting a little wider. Um, just trying to get all the all the variations. You never know what'll work. Sometimes the shot's really obvious and you just know that's the banger. And sometimes you've got to kind of play around with it and try different things, try different compositions, zoom in, zoom out, maybe get a really wide shot and then get really tied in on the details. Uh, in this case, doing a panorama and then some bracketed shots where we can expose your blend later. So I don't know what's gonna work, but I kind of think we're gonna get something. Hey, me again. <laughs> I am sitting here editing, not the video now, but the actual image. Actually, I'm done editing the image, and I just have to tell you just how beautiful this RAW file was. It's very rare that you come away from a shoot with a RAW file where nothing on the right is clipped, nothing on the left is clipped. You just have this beautiful peak of tones that you have so much to work with afterward. And of course, a RAW file comes in really flat, and you have, as an artist, the ability to take that kind of anywhere you want within reason. And there was so much great information. There was so much beautiful color, so much beautiful tone. The highlights were beautiful. The shadows were perfect. It this has been really so much fun to, to actually edit. And I probably should have sat you next to me for the edit. We'll do that on something else. Um, but anyway, without further ado, here's, here's the shot. I hope you like it. All right, friends, I think we are going to call this an episode and wrap this up for today. Thank you so much for watching. Welcome back. 
these are going to get better. I promise. I know this has been a little all over the place. Um, like, subscribe, all that YouTube crap. And until next time, we will see ya. Thank you.